Hello, and welcome to the First Issue Podcast. This week we're talking about comics that came out on October 18th. We've got Kid Lobotomy, number one, Maestros, number one, and Deadpool vs. Old Man Logan, number one. First Issue Podcast is a podcast where we cover all the hyped weekly comic books that you can handle. So uh, come along with us. Make sure to hit us up on Twitter. Um, if we say anything crazy, if we say anything you like, that's uh, First Issue Club, F-I-R-S-T. Um, so we're there. You should be there, too. Who do we have in the club today? And for the question, I found my beard trimmer, and I was able <laughs> to uh, cut my neck beard out. And I felt like, well, this is such a, like, dumb nerd, bad hygiene thing that I just wore a neck beard all work week. <laughs> what is the worst nerd hygiene that you've ever exemplified uh, publicly in your life? I can start to help us out. I'm Mike, the budget king. My worst nerd hygiene is actually in two stories. Once when I was working in New York, I bought a pair of shoes. As I was trying on those shoes... Some coworkers threw my other shoes down the elevator shaft because they were so smelly and stinking up the office. They actually called me pig pen in that job. <laughs> Another uh, nerd hygiene thing I had was uh, I had uh, um, poison ivy once that spread into my eye and made me look like Quasimodo. <laughs> when I took, got done taking off work and came back into work, my uh, head boss said, do you think it spread like that because you never shower? <laughs> oh, <laughs> burn. Sick burn. Good time. You live, you learn. Yeah. You live, you live and you lie. What's your guys' nerd hygiene stories? Uh, Michael DeStacy, when I was younger, I had this Ghost in the Shell t-shirt, which is like a popular anime. That was too adult for me, I think, when I was watching it. Um, but this shirt started falling apart, and I loved the shirt so much that I just stopped washing it and would, like, to try to safety pin the graphic together. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's baller. Um, my name is Greg Lichtai, and I never wash my jeans, ever. And so sometimes they just smell fucking terrible. Uh, my name is Caitlin Morosic, and I don't... I have a lot of, like, poor self-care routines, I guess, that would contribute to this. I have used staples because I can't sew to like fix fraying things on my clothing and worn that to work. I wear shoes out. There's holes in a lot of mine. I just <laughs> generally look like a shambles <laughs> of a person. <laughs> the prettiest hobo. Does that count? <laughs> the prettiest oh, yeah. I think that kind of kinda takes the cake actually. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my girlfriend, the scarecrow. <laughs> the embodiment of nerd hygiene. <laughs> yep. All right. Let's get this podcast started. <laughs> We got Kid Lobotomy number one out on Black Crown, an imprint from IDW. Kid Lobotomy is a comic book taking place, I guess, in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, but somewhere in this uh, magical hotel realm of worlds. And uh, Kid Lobotomy is both the name of the comic book and the name of the main character. He's playing in a band in Williamsburg. He wishes to play the harp. He snaps a guitar string, maiming him and uh, disfiguring his face which sends him into perils of depression, uh, disillusionment, and um, a, uh, I guess an imaginary identity of uh, fucking his sister. And to remove that from him, he tries all of these various things. His father, of which his father's name is Big Daddy, uh, <laughs> sends him away to different uh, places to get rid of all of these problems. Nothing works, but lo and behold, they're going to try, and the name should give this away, lobotomy on him. So they remove a piece of his brain, and th that is uh, the kind of the arc of this, this comic book. This comic book takes place in a haunted hotel where there are ghosts and all kinds of different things happening. There's also a meta story in here that's kind of following a little bit of Kafka's, uh, what's the name of that cockroach story? Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ka Kafka's uh, me Metamorphosis. Um, this is a story about c uh, questioning reality when they, uh, the kid lobotomy now has inherited the throne of performing lobotomies. And when he performs these lobotomies, he unexplainably eats that brain, which I think is an important part to all of this. Mm -hmm. um, and that is Kid Lobotomy. Uh, 
this comic book has the the smell of a uh, 90s era kind of like punk rock uh, comic book era stuff. And in fact, Black Cr- Clown, I think this is the launch of their uh, franchise, they claim to be like the punk rock comic book collection for people who love comic books, who are in the comic book industry. And it's like for, for comic book aficionados, I think he says that. I'll, I'll go ahead and forgive that pretentiousness of the description for this because I think it still ho- holds yeah, up. Yeah, fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> There's even a playlist in the back with like that you're supposed to listen oh, to. Oh, yeah. It's real punk that. rock to say you're punk rock. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think, it, yeah. It has like David Bowie and stuff on it, yeah. right? Yeah. The he, Clash. Yeah. The Smiths. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I don't. There's so much in this book that I wasn't sure if we were supposed to perceive it as his imagination yeah. or real stuff going on. Mm-hmm. But his sister uh, gives him a hand job yep. in his Im- in his imagination. I think we've been there. <laughs> and then and then he has sex with a shapeshifter who he asks to take the form of his sister. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that. Uh, uh, incestual relations is is a is a fetish that exists. I'm sure. Yeah, right? I think so. Yeah. Well, I'm going to pretend I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, no one here has that. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, if my sisters do listen to this podcast, that I <laughs> I have no attraction to clear this. your internet <laughs> history <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just claiming that. Oh there are, no. There are myriads of fetishes that listen that 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 are around, and that is one of them. I could I could at least yeah. hypothesize. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so For I'm sure. not going to knock it. Is what I'm going to say. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> this is, okay, Caitlin, this is actually what I wanted to ask you a question of. If a story has uh, it, incest in it, right, I am immediately kind of revolted and, and not, you know, I, I'm kind of like, ooh. Uh, why, what in my psyche is going on? Caitlin has a background in psychology, a, a, a depth of knowledge. I don't think I can analyze you, <laughs> but it's not common. It's considered deviant. I would argue but it's like when somebody goes into an elevator and stands like the the opposite way it like goes against what you would consider to be commonplace so you're like i don't like it i don't i don't want it i don't like it it's kind of like that okay i mean it's way deeper than just standing (laughs) the other way in an an elevator elevator. but it's similar i get get the analogy yeah this we we mentioned this kafka thing was that apparent to you guys this like story is that is that a meta story is he being too over his sister's name is rosebud in a hotel jesus fuck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there were so many references to so many pop culture things that were particularly hipster or angu- or anguished culture mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um did you guys notice there were two little girls throughout the book that were like ghosts yeah, yeah. um what do you think their deal is are they like an ode to the shining maybe I don't know. One of them's wearing headphones, or they're both. Are they are they earmuffs or headphones? Oh, could be both. Oh, yeah. I it might be an ode. It seems like an ode to The Shining. Obviously, another hotel scenario, right? Yeah. Um, they are the maids, though, right? Aren't they the things that clean up the hotel? Oh, maybe they do. Uh huh. I don't know. I liked it, but I also didn't like that it wasn't mentioned. Mm-hmm. I feel like I need to read it again. I did have to read it again. Yeah. And the one thing I got when I read it again was. He says, then if you just read this as like a text and you didn't look at the illustration, you would read a different story. Because he's always giving you the falsehood of like what is going on. Like when he's cleaning up, he's puking. Yes. Or like oh, he, yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's always saying, which I think is his part of his dis- disillusionment. He's saying his, I think his idea of reality and it's always a, a worse, a much worse reality yeah. th- when you look at the illustration, which I thought was pretty interesting. If you're a bad boy, this comic book is for you because it's got it's got sex, it's got incest, sex, mm. it's got brain eating, mm. it's got crazy clothes. <laughs> yeah. If you if you've ever grabbed a bag of M and M's, you ate them a little bit, and then you went to the checkout and you said, "Deal with it, bitch." <laughs> then you That's half a bag. I'm paying for half of this. <laughs> yeah. Then you you are gonna love this comic book because you are a badass. You ever had a chain wallet? You're gonna love this oh, comic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're still wearing your Jinkos. You're gonna love this comic. You better buy this comic now. <laughs> You got airwalks on right now. <laughs> You're just stuck in the 90s. <laughs> Ever heard of Local H? <laughs> they love this comic book. Yep, Disturbed, Puddle of Mud. Oh Ooh, my god. god. This is turn. All right, let's get talking about Marvel Comics Deadpool versus Old Man Logan number one. 
This was written by Declan Chalvey with art by Mike Henderson. If you don't know already, Old Man Logan is just Wolverine from the X-Men. Just older and from the future. I know, comic books. Ugh. We <laughs> just, just try to just accept it and move forward, and you will like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we follow him on a mission trying to secure a super-powered young girl before some militarized group gets a hold of her uh, to use her as a weapon. Deadpool gets in the way and kind of makes just the story a little bit lighter. Uh, I think this is probably a good book for fans of popular characters looking for something kind of fun and easy to jump into. The book didn't have a ton of depth, but was just kind of a fun, easy read. We'll Super easy. <laughs> I thought it was like grumpy cop, crazy cop. Like, it was like right. a weird, like, they're teaming up, but like, Coming why? To CBS. And, yeah. So I'll say that Deadpool and Logan's uh, initial fight started because he owed, Logan owed Deadpool 25 bucks. Essentially, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Which is kind of an awesome. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One interesting thing I thought about this, too, was that the characters are really similar in a way that just doesn't often occur to you, that they're both, their, their main thing is that they can heal themselves. Mm -hmm. So you cut off their head. If you get their head close enough, it'll just grow back on. Yeah. They could keep killing each other over, over and, and over and over again. We should also mention this is, we covered Marvel Legacy a little bit ago. Um, and so that means a lot of these characters are getting relaunched. Deadpool is getting relaunched, I believe, as Despicable Deadpool, um, which is hearkening back to pulling him out of, he was, he's probably one of the biggest fan favorites of the Marvel Universe currently. If you go to any cons, most people are dressed up as Deadpool, mm -hmm. um, things like that. And but what they're going to pull back from is putting him in all of these teams and making him generic like superhero and making him he is the merce with the mouth. He's a mercenary that just does his own thing yeah. and kind of like wreaks havoc on the Marvel universe. And so I think is that right? Am I? Yeah, I think it's called Despicable Deadpool because he's tired of being like the good guy hybrid. Now yeah. he's just looking out for himself, taking jobs for money, and leaving it at that. So, a little bit of character evolution there. Well, so, it's funny you said that he's the most popular. Deadpool is now, because back in the 90s, even the early 2000s, Wolverine was fucking everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Outside of Spider-Man, these might be the two most popular mm -hmm. Marvel characters. In the 90s, Marvel had a real um, like existential crisis going on, where if, if you were to say name just superheroes in pop culture, immediately your mind would go to Batman, Superman, mm -hmm. Wonder Woman, right? It would take a minute and you would maybe come up with Spider-Man um, and you might come up with like Thor. You did, at that time you wouldn't have come up with Iron Man mm -hmm. um, and you certainly probably wouldn't have come up with Wolverine and now the tables have really shifted uh, towards really because of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Absolutely. Yep. And they rebranded. If you're, if you're a fan of the movies and kind of like comic book culture but never got into comic books, I say pick this book up. It's just easy to see if you like the medium with a book that doesn't have a lot of backstory and it's just a fun thing to jump into. Totally. If you do pick it up, and I know we already covered some legacy craziness, but if you don't know much about it and you pick it up, there are these ads everywhere in this book, and it's all like... They're, I don't understand them still. Like, what is the dabbing, like, guy in one of the ads? With the, the, the pot. The, the, yeah, oh like the pan on his head. Like, I, how would you explain this to somebody? That's or like can you? a spoof comic from the 80s. Mm -hmm. He was the Marvel Universe icon. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it, it's basically in comic form what we're doing right now, <laughs> which is just trashing all the superheroes. <laughs> well, I mean, you can tell, you can tell pretty that clearly that they're ads. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I slept, and he's just dabbing. <clears throat> like. they, are, they are ads in the fashion of, like, old collectible comic yes. ads, which the, this one, mine didn't have a stamp, but they had, we, had, we talked about these I don't stamps. think this is part of the legacy program. Oh, okay. Because that. this is, like, outside... Uh, this can be fucked up. This is actually outside of, like, the legacy umbrella. Okay. Because they're redoing all these characters, so they're just like, well, fuck it. Like, it's not part of it. So it's trying to lay some groundwork for people, then. Yeah. It's trying to tell you, like, these are the issue numbers that you want to pay attention to. These are part of the Marvel legacy. 
these are the storylines you're going to, if you like them, you're going to want to read. Mm-hmm. I want to say this. The front says parental advisory, not for kids. This is for kids. I have a child. I would let my kid read this. There's nothing bad about this. There's nothing. Mm-mm. This is a wholesome book. It's not even that bloody. It isn't. I mean, he is killing, like, thugs on a subway. Did they, I don't know. I'm not sure they died. They got maimed. Yeah. So buy this book for your kids immediately. <laughs> yeah. This Explain to them what dismemberment <laughs> is. Right. This is a book written for six-year-olds and 60-year-olds. And truth and journalism and fake news. Oh, Explain yeah, to them all that. of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that part. That's funny. All right, so Maestros or Maestros? Maestros is how what I'm going with is um, a book that was written and the artist was also the author, uh, Steve Scross, and um, it is fantastic. I love this book. Uh, you killed it, Steve. <laughs> yeah, did a bang up job. Um, so it is sort of the last Maestro story. There's a massacre that kills the entire royal family of wizard kings, wizard rulers, and it focuses on the son of the maestro that was just killed and his sort of call to action, and he's got to save the day from emptiness, which is a very interesting concept or theme. I think it might be getting at, this is a guess, like the feeling of a full range of experience, like good and bad, is much better than nothing at all. So, like, that's what they're fighting for, in addition to, like, all of these realms and people in the realms not dying. Like, that's also a pretty good (laughs) thing to fight for. But um, another theme that I thought was really interesting about this book was that otherworldly beings and super powerful beings always love humans and humanity. Like, they always, like, crave that. They created earth Mm -hmm. just to see how people would do without magic because that was fascinating to them and this thing this that happens a lot i think in other stories and things what do you guys think i thought it was crazy that this book is so serious in its drawing but then it's also it 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 shows the whole creation of earth right so it's also dealing with like yeah god yeah (laughs) but then it's also like tiny stuff happens in a strip club Oh, my God. In the art in this book, you even if you didn't want to read it, like, buy it anyway because it's like there are some panels that are like, where's Waldo, <laughs> where there is so much happening. Mm-hmm. And I, I just stared at it, and I wasn't even reading it. I was just looking at everything that was going on. Caitlin, I am so happy you said that where's Waldo reference <laughs> um, because on the cover of this book, if you look at um, – I believe this is one of the exotic dancers that he's kind of admiring walking by. Mm -hmm. Her tattoos, there's a Deathly Hallows tattoo. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of Harry Potter tattoos. There's a handful of um, Lord of the Rings tattoos um, all on her that you kind of see through her attire. And, like, it's it's such a little Easter egg. But I also think that, well, Mike, what do you think about that? that? What could that allude to? So I thought, so this book deals with multiple realms and other you know, possibilities where we've got orcs, dwarves, talking animals, things like that. So this might be open to a universe where maybe we assume that things like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter are actually going on in these, like, alternate realms. Oh. That everything fantasy and sci-fi exists somehow in this large, vast realm of all realms. Mm. I love that. Yeah. yeah. The I conductor like of all things fantasy. My favorite line in this comic book was... I had if, a few. You did? <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering if yours is the same. Uh, mine is, hallelujah, I'm a new man. <laughs> 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 when uh, the oil man uh, drinks an elixir to give his tiny dick a growth of nine and a half inches, something yeah. to that, and he just walks out into the strip club uh, <laughs> full to- fully torqued. <laughs> and I don't know if maybe... He's, he's, like, shouting, who needs a credit card paid off? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he bought everybody in the, in the strip club drinks. Uh, I wonder if he's going to be uh, fully torqued the rest of his life, if that was, like, kind of the... Oh. Yeah. Ooh, I hope not. I don't know. Uh, all those well, because always... he did tell him not to drink it all at once. He was like, slow down or drink that with food or something. Yeah, drink it with food, yeah. Like <laughs> Side effect, you are fully torqued. 
for life. Whenever I see those Viagra commercials, they say, call your doctor if your erection lasts longer than like five or six hours or something. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, God, that sounds like the worst thing right. ever. I'm a human coat rack. Yeah. Oh, four, a four-hour boner. Hours. My God. That's, I have errands to run. It's yeah. ridiculous. That's yeah. too much, man. Uh, Sweatpants. <laughs> I've already slammed it in the dryer door a few times. It's ridiculous. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if we covered this, but... The so this guy Will is kind of a dirtbag who's the last remaining son of the maestro that got killed. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's kind of looked at as a douchebag sort of character, I think. So he had a the maestro had a fling with a woman from Earth, had this kid, uh, and now he makes his money using magic for cheapo things like selling guys hard ons. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think he mentions that he is restricted, though, a little bit by what he could actually be doing. If he doesn't mm-hmm. want them to find him? Yeah. Oh, that's or what it is? That's what it is, yeah. yeah. I don't, something, there is a limitation there. Mm-hmm. You're right. My impression is, is that he's welcome to this realm universe of, like, all these fantastical things and magic, but chooses to stay on Earth to kind of reject his father's wishes for him. Major yeah. daddy issues. Major daddy issues, yeah. right. One of the quotes that I wrote down was the past in the past story arc, and it was like he's finding out that he is a wizard king, and he's like, "I'm like Jesus's cousin or something," <laughs> and then he cries. Yeah, yeah. he's crying. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's so the, good. I always hoped I would be special. Like it's a lot to take in. And he's such a chubby, gnarly little kid, and I love the next panels like an evolution of like ape to man. Oh my God. And this, like, beautiful physique of man at the end point. And then he's afterwards. It's like this <laughs> yeah. four, he's four foot six, like, <laughs> little grape of a person. <laughs> they definitely, yeah, <laughs> threw on, like, 30 pounds for that panel. Yeah. Oh, Come here, you little, little peach. You look little so grape. dirty and awful. Oh, my God. You're like, this is what all evolution built to was <laughs> this kid. Yeah, this book went in a couple pages before it got super goofy. So you didn't know it was going to, like, yeah. go way off the rails. Well, <laughs> and eventually it gets there in a good way. It's yeah. so rails. good. That yeah. wizard with, like, the cod piece, which is someone else's face. And yes. Just like, what the he's fuck? The, he's the emptiness guy. Yeah. He's, like, the one that's, yeah. like, stomping people's faces into bits. Yeah, him's the bad guy. Yeah. And <laughs> that was Maestros <laughs> number one. Yeah, so a handful of issues come out each week that we don't have enough time to cover. Uh, Michael Cray, Animosity, Sherlock Frankenstein, even Rugrats got even Rugrats. a number one issue this week. Quick thing about Rugrats. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. These parents <laughs> just glued to their phones. <laughs> they took Rugrats in this book and just took the cartoon but added drones and cell phones. Yeah. It was like someone said modernize the Rugrats and the only way they could think to do it was just throw technology at it. Oh, yeah. God. And, and nanny cams? Like, nanny what, cams, I don't... Yeah. What? And let me be clear. I know way too much about the Rugrats timeline. <laughs> <laughs> there's, ooh, there's a timeline. Oh, God. <laughs> they yes. were talking about it just before we started recording, and I was like, I have forgotten all you of this. You got Rugrats, you got the two movies where they go to France, and then Dill Pickle is born, Tommy's <laughs> brother, and then you have All Grown Up, which is them in junior high. <laughs> now, if we are to stay... <laughs> In this timeline, this is before the movies. This is before all growed up. This is technically in the TV show realm, the timeline. Okay, so this is set in the '90s. Why do they have cell phones? This goes again. This ruins the Rugrats timeline because it's throwing technology that doesn't exist yet into an era where it shouldn't be. Oh my god! They're time travelers. Maybe we're gonna find out that yeah, that there's some type of this is lost. Is there not a thing? It, this is lost. <laughs> we could end it there. But I, I don't even... <laughs> Just abrupt stop the yeah. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> this is lost. Rugrats is infiltrated with lost. <laughs> and we're good. Oh. Produced by Dick Wolf. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I, I can't believe how seriously you said all grown up. <laughs> you, like, didn't miss a beat. Listen, <laughs> Dill had a lot of things to deal with in all grown up. Dill, that's his real that's name? That's his real name. Because mm. it came from the movie because, like, he didn't have a name for the baby. <laughs> You're, like, still in the nurse, Rugrats. The like. nurse came in. The nurse came into the room where the little baby was at, and they were taking lunch orders. And they ordered a sandwich, and she goes, you want a dill pickle with that? And then the mom said, dill, I like that name. And so did Stu, the dad. And they go, dill pickle. D- 
Didi is the most. Didi, yeah. I'm not crazy Ooh, here. You guys God. are the crazy ones. This is a good <laughs> franchise. What is a wholesome and they, franchise? They kind of shat on it a little bit. That's true. They did a lot of uh, like uh, holiday specials for Jewish holidays. They did. Like Passover and things like that. Yeah. Those were kind of cool, actually. That's how I learned about Unleavened Bread. I think, and huh. I, this probably will not make the podcast, but Mike, you and I were talking about this. This All show, of this has to make the podcast. <laughs> oh, God. No, Matt's going to yes. listen to this and be like, fuck <laughs> no, every I last need it. bit of this. I need it. Yeah, I do, I do want some of this in the podcast. <laughs> but this Rugrats TV show was kind of a, for, it was for children, but kind of a slow introduction to the Jewish religion. Culture, yeah. Culture, yeah. I, I think there's some quote about Seinfeld that said that that was similar to what they were doing in Seinfeld as as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was it, it. I, I, I thought it was like great because it's like I knew about Jewish holidays just because I was a fan of this show mm-hmm. and the, their their retelling of these biblical stories were like pretty awesome because a common thing that happens is that Tommy, much like Doug, is is imagining these fake worlds that he's journeying in, and then you go into those worlds. Yeah, the only difference between that is Tommy's a baby, and Doug has some serious fucking issues. <laughs> <laughs> like wearing the Your same dog's in an igloo, Doug. What the fuck wrong with you? <laughs> you wear the same thing every day. Yeah, Tommy can get away with that because he is a baby. <laughs> right? Is Chucky potty trained? There is an episode that deals with that. <laughs> 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 You're like, you're like, you're a, you're first, like a rain man for Rugrats. You're the first Rugrats historian I've ever met in my life. Uh, in the beginning of the episodes, he is not, but he learns oh my to God. be fun. Yeah. So we could figure out where the timeline is, because in this uh, 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 comic book, he TTs himself, which would not be a problem if he was wearing a diaper. Well, um, it, no. It, 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 it looked like he wet himself because oh. they went through the sprinklers. He didn't actually wet himself. Oh. I, and this, okay, see, Susie Carmichael's <laughs> on the cover. So that kind of gives a good indication of what season we're in. And what season would that be? I think we're in between two and three at the moment. Fucking <laughs> Greg. <laughs> Why the fuck do we not do Rugrats as an actual book? <laughs> Oh, scrap the first couple of segments. Let's just do a half hour on Rugrats. Oh, my God. So, We're all, yeah. I'm crying. Yeah. Oh, God. Well. Good stuff. And Rugrats. that was that was Rugrats number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Matt, do with this what you will. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm going to do your... <clears throat> this has been the First Issue Club podcast, a proud production of the Fountain City Frequency family of podcasts. We recorded in KCUR Studios, and our theme music is by Primary Color Music. Thanks to Matt Hodap, our editor and producer. And now it's time for a goodbye. When I close my eyes, I see dead Maestos dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, this is Greg Lichtai signing off. I Goodbye. I'm Morazic. I'm not, well, I'm, I'm, I wasn't done yet. <laughs> and I'll show myself out. Okay, no. <laughs> like to Stacy's time for sleep. <laughs> I liked Goodbye Babies. Oh, Should I yeah. stick with Goodbye Babies? Goodbye Babies. <laughs> <laughs> Michael to Stacy. Bye bye, babies. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. You guys are so much better. I'm just working out mine. <laughs> That's okay. Let's we'll wait till eight, and then we'll have to see men. <laughs> I don't all. know. I really liked. See ya. Yeah, we'll go with that. And see ya. Bye. <laughs> I always have to have the last fucking word. <laughs> I like that. Bye. <laughs>